art. Ew. All right. So hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Miss Texas show back again. Um, I definitely want to give you all an overview of us and what we are about, where we showcase life in Texas as well as beyond. And we want to highlight amazing survivors of traumatic events, family violence, sex trafficking, sexual abuse, and community leaders who share community resources. Under our segment, Military Time, we invite military and veterans who would like to share with us their experiences during and after the military service. We run this segment in partnership with the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We would like to invite those who have overcome traumatic events and would like to share and are now ready to help others. But under our Beauty for Ashes segment, we invite fellow pageant sisters, winners and nominees, artists, musicians, actors, models, you name it, um, as well as survivors who are now ambassadors for the cause to share with our audience their lives and the impact they have made. Our show runs twice a month. And if you would like to become a guest on our show, email us at MsUSATexas at gmail.com, which is M-S-U-S-A. T-E-X-A-S at gmail.com, or you can message us on our Facebook, which is also at Ms. USA Texas. And in case you haven't met me yet, this is Melissa Santana. I am the new co-host um, for the Miss Texas show. I've done a few interviews, but in case this is your first time tuning in, lovely to meet you. Um, I'm also an advocate by trade and love talking about these topics and just overcoming trauma and all of that. Um, and so I'm always happy to be a part of this. And with that, we have a lovely guest today who's going to talk to us about their wonderful story. Um, this is Anya Vasquez. She is an energy relationship coach. She works with mompreneurs who want to improve their overall energy and reignite their passions with their hubbies, especially after having kids. Ooh, talk about it. I have, she has been working with energy for over 10 years, and she was actually her first client, her very own first client. Love to hear more about that. She went from an emotionally abusive relationship where she stayed for four years to finding her Prince Charming at the age of 28. Um, they now have two boys that they helped to create, so the wonderful family that they've created together, and they show the world what a thriving relationship actually looks like. She also helps women understand what goddess energy looks like and helps them teach them to rewire themselves so that they can finally live by the laws of life and manifest the life that they deserve so all of that sounds like super intriguing right <laughs> so, yeah, a lot it. of that there when I was listening oh my god I was like oh oh really so awesome <laughs> right that's you <laughs> so yeah so with that no please definitely tell us more about you what you do who you are okay you so yes definitely all of that that you said but basically the story goes you know I was born in Europe small country traveled a lot and then I decided to move to China. So I went to China, uh, studied there, got myself a boyfriend, brought him back, got married. And even though it was the best time of my life, again, you know, it, it, it's always, you know, how those, the, the worst stories are the best stories, basically, right? Uh, so <laughs> that that's basically what might happen with my first husband, because we got married when I was 21, 22, somewhere around there. Um, and yeah, we were together for four years. And it was one of those relationships when it's really, 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 really good. And then really, 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 really bad. And um, I was really lost at that time. I was in love, yes. And I moved mountains with him because I basically found myself an OG. Let's just put it like that. And he was from, uh, so I was, I'm from Slovenia. We met in China. He was from Sierra Leone. And, um, you know, I brought him to my country and we lived there for a while. And I thought that was it, but then I got very exhausted because it was just a lot of work from my part. And then I found my best friend who was actually like my coach, my mentor, and who I've been working ever since to focus really on myself. So it was, it was all about that self-improvements, growth, understanding yourself, just inner, a lot, a lot of inner work, years and years, like I said, over 10 years now. And when I started um, doing it is because I was, you know, happy on the outside, but very miserable on the inside. I was 23. And there was days when I was like, oh, my God, you know, like this, this, this is going to be my life like forever. And it was, yeah, quite horrible. So I was like, you know what, I'm not doing this. I don't know if this is supposed to be like this, but I don't want that. So I, majority of us, especially me, I don't have any really good examples of good relationships in my life whatsoever. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So... <laughs> 
So I kind of had to create my own. I just made literally a fairy tale in my fairy tale in my head of how this is, should be, or what I actually want. Um, and when I realized that he was not actually going to be able to give me that, not that we were not there, but he's not going to be able to provide me with that. I decided and I got divorced. Of course, I got divorced when I was 24 and he was in my country. He was there alone. So there was a lot of negativity that I had to deal with of, you know, who's going to love me after I'm 23 and divorced or who's going to, you know, uh, everybody's going to hate me because I brought him here and now I left him alone. And, you know, you know all the stories that basically they tell us but at that moment as I was growing myself and he didn't want to follow he did not believe me I tried it was not like from yesterday to tomorrow oh you don't like it oh bye bye you know like not I've done so much work and I tried and I tried but he and then I realized that we are you know our, our fundamentals are different and what our core values are are different and when I realized that of course I got divorced and then I continue my path and I travel the world again blah 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 fast forward to I'm um, 28 uh, in the Dominican Republic where and I found my husband on tinder yeah from all the places I did. I do. I do swear on online dating. I literally swear on online dating because there's a lot of saved energy and time in this busy world. But you need to be very, um, I'm not going to say resourceful, but you have to be very creative. Like you, you need to be very in tune with, you know, what people say, how they say it and, and very, very observative. So you can see through all the pretending that happens, you know? Uh, anyway, me and my husband, it was a true fairy tale. Like everyone, everything was just like smooth sailing. I can't believe it. You know, we've been together over like six years now. We have two boys, one is three and one is one. Uh, we do live our dream life. And even though, you know, he met me and he was, you know, away from all the things that I was doing as in meditating, very mindful, very, you know, talking about energy, uh, how, you know, you manifest everything, how your outside world is, uh, basically a reflection of your inner world. So he, he kind of knew some stuff, but I was like, Oh, the crazy girl, like, Oh my gosh, you always talking about that energy. But he, he listened, he accepted and he followed and because he started following we have grown so much in such a short time that now he knows that there's no doubts he's tested everything by himself and he knows that he's just like you know like yesterday he was telling me um, I want us to establish, I don't know, a routine that we can meditate every morning together for 30 minutes and I'm like when he my man says that I'm like Yes, like I, you just got all way hotter for me right now, you know, because it's that mindfulness of being really aware of yourself, of the world, of everything, and that what you want, and you're focused in life. You're not just, you know, like from day to day, and you're just kind of, you know, floating in air. So a lot of intentions, again, purposeful living, living they call it, and yeah, this is long story short, I guess. <laughs> Oh, no, but a great story. So, yeah, I love it. I was, like, glued the entire time. Trust me. Oh, but I love that. And so, and you definitely talked about, like you said, it definitely was a journey. So there was definitely the the one itself um, and all of that. And you stayed, you know, in that time. But there was definitely this five-year situation is what I heard. It sounded like yeah. around, around that where you did that. And so, yes, I think that it's evident just by the way you, like you said, the way you communicate, the, the partner that you attracted and, you know, came into your life, how the universe responded to all that work you put in mm -hmm. brought you this amazing Prince Charming. But I'm yeah. curious in those five years, because obviously mm -hmm. that sounds like a good, you know, sizable amount of time. What all were the things that you went engaged in you know what I mean like to help you and like what yeah um so okay one I guess the one that stood out the most I did for a year I said no boyfriends no sex no nothing like it's just me like I'm not interested I don't care so that was one year that I specifically decided for that but that doesn't mean again you know that when you're doing your inner growth that you're supposed to isolate yourself or that you know you are supposed to be abstinent from sex that doesn't mean that because ultimately you know like I can't teach you to swim on land 
end, right? I, I can tell you what you're supposed to do, but then ultimately I have to throw you in the water so you can test it out. So that's is basically what I did. I, I learned, you know, there was a lot of meditation, a lot of me working with my coaches, a lot of support, a lot of accountability. Um, and then a lot of, you know, me realizing what it is that is pulling me back me me knowing what are my blockages what are my potentials and really just focusing on me and how can on a daily basis I can be more aware of my behavior of my um, thinking patterns of my emotional patterns and be very very just mindful to see myself from a completely different perspective as I'm uh, you know like you could say I'm like a soul that detaches myself from my being of observing myself as how do I walk? How do I talk? What do I do? How do I act? When I get upset, how long does that last? So a lot of that. <laughs> and then of course, yeah, then I started, okay, let me start dating. So of course I had boyfriends in between and that's the whole point. Now let's practice this in real life because life is easy when everything's fine. But when, you know, stuff starts happening, then you actually see, you know, what are you made of? Like all those practices and all the mindfulness, is it working for you at the, in those crucial moments? Because that's the whole point, right? So of course I, I, I started dating, you know, I met people um, and for, you know, I, I was, I, w- I went back to China in between, I got myself a boyfriend and we were there for, you know, six months. And then I knew that I'm not going to continue living in China. So when the time came, you know, when I was feeling called like, okay, this is enough of China. I'm going to go live in the Caribbean right now. It was so simple, very mathematical for me. Like, I like you. I don't know if we're going to get married or not. I don't know. I do like spending time with you, right? That boyfriend. And I was like, like, I know I got to go to the Caribbean. So are you coming? And he was like, I'm not coming. So I'm like, okay, so apparently this is not it. It was like so simple for me. It was not all oh, those emotions and we should have and could have and how can I? Because I was so aligned of knowing what am I supposed to do? And if that person is not aligned with that, then I know it was just a step in my you know, development. So he has taught me something. I have learned something from him, but it was not it. And it was not like no crying and no, no, you know, fuss and drama about around it. And I was like, okay, I get. And he was even more and more upset than I was. But I was like, you know, like it, it's, it's not supposed to be like if God would have wanted us to be together, if we were supposed to be together, it wouldn't have been such a, you know, stress of how, where, who, you know, is going to be, but it would be smooth because that's what I'm saying. When I met my husband, like, stuff was just so smooth like I I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the short story so I lived uh north of the Dominican Republic in Samana Peninsula while he was in Santo Domingo which is south those are three hour drive you know ride away right but for my birthday I'm like let me go to Santa Domingo big city celebrate with my friends I don't know go to the cinema whatever because I lived on the beach okay so I go there and that time somebody presents me tinder I didn't even know tinder existed so I'm like oh awesome and I, I wasn't even like searching, searching, but I was literally on each, every platform that I could be just to meet people to from, you know, Airbnb to couch surfing to dating sites. Like I just went on everything. I'm like, I got to meet people. Like I'm new. I know now, but I don't know anybody. Let me just start meeting people. So basically that's how we met. And then uh, a week later, we talked for a week. I came to Santa Domingo. We got together I, as soon as I saw him in physical, I knew he was going to be my husband. Like he just stepped out of the car. I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'm done. This is it. He knows it. He always laughs at it because I was so, I was so struck at his presence that I almost, uh, I almost walked into a, a light pole. So I was like, Ooh, wait, wait. like I was like a little clumsy and whatnot. And he laughed at that. But the point is, and this is the very important thing, I was very, uh, always very authentic. I knew who I was and I was not, you know, you know, that honeymoon stay when everybody pretends and trying to be everybody else and I'm better than I am. There was no BS between us at that moment. No BS. So I was like, this is me. This is what you get. And we connected like no tomorrow. And then in the same moment when, you know, I met him, I was actually already interviewing for my new job in Santo Domingo because I knew that up there where is Campo, right? I'm not going to get myself a husband. Like, you know, there's a different mentality. So I was like, let me move to Santo Domingo. There's more options there, right? 
And I was already in the process of me doing the interviews and getting myself a job. And I got a job that was two blocks. I'm not joking, two blocks away from his house. So I'm telling you, when everything was meant to be, it was freaking meant to be. I was right there. I moved 10 minute walk from his house. You know, we were right there. I don't know, maybe six months later, we moved in together into a house and it's been ever since. And we've moved a lot. But right now we're in Punta Cana. Like, you know, I'm 10 minutes away from the beach where I've always wanted to, you know, live. And it's just just like smooth sailing. But smooth sailing, that doesn't mean it's perfect. But, you know, like the universe does answer all your desires. But if you have a partner who you are on the same you know, side as a team and that you understand this stuff so you can support each other and uplift your, you know, each other. So there's no of this, you know, bad days of, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be angry with you for, I don't know how long. And then you're soaking for that. And then you lose time there and then you lose energy there. And then you're like into this. So, so it's like, I always say there's two types of mentality. Either is the problem related mentality or is it the solution related mentality so we live in the solution mentality so it's always solution solution how can we fix and we don't even care okay it's a struggle okay so what are we going to do about it now and when you focus on that you just (laughs) go but yeah a lot of self-work with the right support with the right accountability, because ultimately you want to go back to you being authentically you. So you are even capable of being with somebody who is, again, authentically and fully dumb. And then you can talk about soulmates. You got the gist, right? (laughs) Oh, no, absolutely. I love that. And then so speaking of that, like since you you definitely mentioned like doing the work, doing all of these things. And I love the mention of coaches. You said that there were like coaches, yeah. and mentors that helped you. And it sounds like like you said, so like just like how you have to find a partner, like you got to date around, find the right fit, make sure that person is right for you. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, like with the coaches, like did you, you know what I mean? Did anybody tell you, you know, who to um, connect with? Like, how did you find out who are the right people? Oh help? my God. Yeah, that's a funny story. So I didn't search, I wasn't even looking. Nobody told me. Um, I was actually selling vacuum cleaners from house to house in my country. And I ran into this person who was, oh my God, I hated him for like the first few weeks. He was just so obnoxious to me. And he's my best friend now. So, (laughs) but he was just so, you know why? Because I knew, I knew always like my ego is very high. So if somebody who knows and knows which buttons to press, I'm like, God damn it, you know so that's how I felt and he knew all the buttons to press all the all the all the dark corners of my soul he like uncovered here you go you know I'm like you know so I really like yeah I was I had an issue liking him for a while um but yeah I just kind of stumbled upon and then he sold me so how he basically I, I sold him the vacuum cleaner but he sold me life that I always say um so he changed my life fully. Um, and he, the, the thing is that the way we started is what I use and what we use is um, numerology. Numerology that we use, it's connected with traditional Chinese medicine. So something that I also love because I lived in China, like I do all that, right? So what is the point that you have the numerology as a tool that will help you see your own soul blueprint? What does that mean is seeing what your blockages are, seeing your potentials and seeing from an energy perspective, what is that is not energetically aligned already what's happening. Like I can see for every person I can see, okay, you have relationship issues. Okay. You have money issues. Oh, you have issues with your parents or you have this. So I can see all that. And I use this tool with my clients. Of course, I use this tool for every day. Definitely. But that tool was sold to me because when he started talking about numbers and traditional Chinese medicine, I'm like, oh, I like that. It's mysterious. I have no idea what this is, but I like it sold. So I took that class. But as soon as I took that class, because it was like a three week workshop, as soon as I work, I got that. I feel like everything to that moment has led me to be in that room at that time, in that place. And it was like, like, like just puzzles just made like everything fit together, you know, perfectly together from the moment when I was married to my ex, when I was divorced and like everything, everything made sense. And I was like, I don't know what this is because, you know, our mind don't really fully comprehend this stuff. 
but I'm like, I'm, I'm following, this is it, this is it. And I, that's basically how I was. So I continue with these people and they've saved my life multiple, multiple times, especially that first year, like I said, me and my you know best friend who was my mentor, he was on the phone with me every day for a year. I'm not even joking. Every day for a year for me to really, really, you know, detach myself from what I was to what kind I want to be or how should have I been better. So I was able to, you know, with time to do that by myself as well. Now I can do it by myself, but the first year I was lost. You know, you're in your world. When you're so much in your world, you don't see the different perspective. So yeah, it took me a long time for him to kind of keep on changing my perspective, changing my perspective. <laughs> but uh, that's basically it. I just kind of fell into it and I followed and it was God's calling, whatever you want to call it. And I went with it. Absolutely. But then, like you said, that's so interesting, too, because obviously in that position, you definitely weren't expecting that. Like you said, you were trying to make your sale. Oh, that was it. You were expecting anything in return. But I think it's amazing. And it speaks so much to, like you said, about the energy and like reading and being able to know that and see that. So I think it's such a great testament to it. But I think that was another gem that you dropped. I mean, you've you've dropped many. Um, So taking note of all those. But I love that you said, first of all, you're a fan of online dating because I'm trying it, y'all. And it's, it's rough out here rough in these streets but I I am a fan I am a fan but I love that you said so you should pay attention if you're gonna do online dating it's not a bad thing you know what I mean there has been success it's just but pay attention to what people say and how they say it so I was wondering if you could speak more to that because I think that's amazing to share oh yeah yeah I got a lot I got that question quite a lot honestly I'm not even there was a there was a time when I was like oh maybe I should help like dating people because I've done this as well. Like I got, you know, my Prince Charming online and all that. I, I thought about it, um, but I am more passionate about the married life and the kids and all that. Um, okay. So firstly is um, when you talk about the online dating, you know, that you got limited amount of characters that wherever you can write, right? Like a bio, right? It's short. So like, be mindful. What does, firstly, what kind of pictures does this, this person, you know, put on? Like, if you're going to see a bunch of abs and, and stuff, I'm like, I mean, that's not very, uh, you probably get, the person's probably cocky, way too confident, ego's huge. So you're like, you're going to be dealing with that. Or, and he's, you know, he's focusing on so much more on physical than anything else. So I'm like, eh, not interested. That doesn't mean my my man came with a six pack, but he didn't have six pack. Oh, actually, you know what? He actually had a six pack picture, but let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. He had, but he was, he used to be like 300 pounds. So he was in the process. He lost a lot of weight. And then he put this before and after picture of himself. But the picture was, I'm telling you, so horrible. Like his face, he, it doesn't, it didn't even seem him. So even after when we were were, you know, talking, I'm like, who's this? Like, that's me. I'm like, no, that's not you because he had no hair, no beard, no nothing. I'm like, oh my God, this seems like a different person. Uh, but again, yeah, that was a six pack there, but it was not about, it was the, you know, he was showing the transformation of what he had achieved and, you know, doing that, it takes a lot of mental work. So that was also a plus, but especially the bio part, you know, when people write stuff about like what, what matters to them, you know, like I, I tricked my you know, like I'm a white girl in a Latino America. Everybody's going to swipe like for me, no matter who you are, where you are. Like everybody's going to think like I'm this American girl. And especially in the Dominican Republic, they think like I'm American and I'm going to take them to America. That's that's the, you know, the basics. So um, I, I put horrible pictures of me. Like the one, they were nice, but like the ones that I didn't like, you know, like, mm, no, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. And then in my bio, I wrote... If you don't like, no, if you don't believe in angels, unicorns, and ghosts, don't talk to me. I literally wrote that because I'm, again, I'm just testing our, the, the mentality. I'm testing out how open are they? Because yeah, like I lived in the Campo before. So though, you know, Campo people are nice. They joyful, you know, I, they love the life, but they're not that ambitious. They're not that, you know, like they're, they're stuck in their Campo and, you know, I wanted, you know, more. So opening up, basically kind of throwing a, you know, a hook. How do you say like when you do go fishing, right? You, you throw it right to kind of catch it. So I did that to see, you know, how, people are going to react because ultimately I knew that people are going to think I'm crazy because I'm talking about energy. I'll talk about, you know, God, and I'm talking about angels and I believe in all that. So, you know, if you're going to talk to me, like you got to be open to me and to that. And if you're not, then we are ha, you know, away, away, away. And we can't be together basically. So my husband, he saw that. And the first reply, 
guy that he did on Tinder was something in connection with that. Like we started talking about aliens and it was completely nonsense stuff, but he made me laugh, which was one of the non-negotiables that I had. Very important now, let's say. And then he basically, he didn't say, oh yeah, you know, like, yes, that's true or whatever, but he he showed his open-mindedness to it, which was a, another one of my non-negotiables. So yeah, when you go dating or online dating, you have to go in with five non-negotiables. I'm so strict about that. It took me months to get mines, but those non-negotiables that you got to stick to. So it's like a rule. And, and even when I was dating and before I met my husband, I'm, I dated another guy from Tinder who was amazing, really. But in three months, I realized that the open-mindedness was not as to the level I wanted it to be. So he like, for example, numerology part, like it's a sole blueprint. I even told him, you know, like I, I did his calculations. I told him like um, from an energy perspective that his, uh, that he has so many, uh, we call them heart numbers. So I know for a fact that his heart is energetically weak. So I told him that without knowing that he had some heart issues in, in the past. So he tells me, you know, I'm telling you this and he's like, wow, interesting, interesting, right? So anyway, it was interesting for him. But then he said, as soon as he said that, as in, it's interesting, but it's not something that I would leave by, you know, like something that I would like, it's, it's a cute, like, you know, I'm going to read a, a little bit of horoscope in a newspaper. I'm going to laugh about it and I don't care about it. So this was not the way I wanted to live with this knowledge that I've been living for so many years and I know it's freaking, you know, works. So I need you to believe that if you don't believe in that, we're done. As soon as he, I knew that he's not there. I was, you know, my old Anya would have been so much, oh, you show him, you're going to prove it to him. You're going to, in a way, you're going to change him, you know, change his mind when he sees it more, blah, blah, blah. Because I am, you know, an all loving, positive and optimistic person. <laughs> As I said, you know, I, I turned OGs into husbands, but, <laughs> but I was like, no, that's my pattern. I got to stop doing that. I canceled him. And I think it was like a week or two weeks later, my husband came and I'm not even joking. As soon as I changed my pattern, like, you know, when I closed those doors that were not for me consciously, you know, the guy, they always say God opens another door. And that was that door that I, you know, been searching for always. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, no, definitely love that. And yes, I think that it, it makes sense too, that like, yes, as, as you, you did each step, it was kind of almost like a reward, like you said, you know what I mean? For putting in that effort and yep. doing that. And it's interesting because it's such a common theme from the beginning. So like, even you mentioning that abusive relationship from the beginning, like you might not, even when you were in, and that was before you did a lot of the inner work, it was still you knowing enough about yourself and what you deserve and that you wanted better. You wanted somebody that could grow with you. This person couldn't. So like, we don't need to always feel guilty for making those decisions. So I think it's awesome that like, you know, cause a lot of us, we beat ourselves up for that. Yeah. We're like, we gotta, we gotta stay in this. We gotta make it work. I said, I was going to make this commitment and that's great. But the commitment you have to yourself is not one that you should feel bad about. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it, yeah. And to be a better person for someone else, you know, you gotta be there for yourself first. So, uh -huh. Right. So I love that you mentioned all of those things. And I definitely appreciate what you said about like, so as a result of that, knowing what you want, use that to then help you, you know, find that other person, you know, and all of that. But I do love that you mentioned that, yes, your heart is definitely more with the marriage, you know what I mean? Helping people, you know, in that way. So first, I definitely want, uh, wanted you to talk more about that and like how it is that you help others. Mm -hmm. But before that, I'm curious. So as a person who holds all these hats, so like you're apparently you're a wife, you're your mom, you know what I mean? You, and then you also apparently are a coach as well. Like, how do you keep it still in balance? I mean, obviously you've done a lot of inner work that's helped you get to this point, but how is it that you keep the balance yourself? And, you know, like what are things that you engage in? What do you do? So, well, definitely the most important is what I, you know, work with my clients ultimately is as women, we got so many roles to play that we usually spray, you know, spread ourselves way too thin. And then usually if you're, if you're mother, then the mother's guilt kick in because now you have kids, you want to be with your kids, but then you have work, you want to do your work and then finding that balance of always. And then, and then, but, but majority of moms were like kind of perfectionists. It's like, you want to do it all, right? Like you, like you can't do it all. So the most important is actually, so I always come back to the very simplest thing that people know is everything happens for a reason, right? Like when I, when, when, when I have, I don't know, 10 tasks that I'm supposed to do a day and I figure out, you know, I figure that I've only done three and it's basically the end of the day. I'm like, 
I can be upset or I can feel angry or guilty or I'm like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Like I know I did my best, but life take its own course. So I got to be, I got to go with that flow. So if, if somehow the circumstances, you know, prevent, uh, prevented me to do all that or didn't allow me, or I, I could only do that, 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 then that's the way it was supposed to be done. So when I say that to myself, I don't fall into the negativity patterns of, you know, beating myself over of what I did or did not do. And I'm like, fine, tomorrow's another day. So in, in theory, all sounds very simple. <laughs> but when it comes to people actually doing it, and that's where, you know, me, I turn, you know, come in as a coach because I have to keep on reminding them that, that we can't do it all. We can't do it all perfectly. So this is a very important because we feel like we want to do everything perfectly, but we can't. So yeah, there's many moments I'm like, oh, I'm going to do, I got to do this, 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 this work. And then that exact day, my kids are going to be the, the most ñoños in the whole year. So all of a sudden I can't do anything out of my work because they're mommy, they're crying and it's horrible. And I'm like, you know what? Bye-bye work. I cancel. And I'm like, apparently my kids need me and I'm with my kids. So it's, it's always, I always say, you know, having your own peace, which is always number one, whichever, whatever, whenever, but then, you know, reading, you know, kind of say reading the room. Like I have kids, I got to read the room. Like I got to see how much I can push with my kids. There's a day who's going to, who's, not, who's, you know, one day my toddler's not going to need me at all. And I'll be like, okay, apparently this is a good day for me to work. And I'll like, ta, 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 right. But then there's another day who's going to need me, that's going to need me so much. I won't be able to do any work. So I need to go with that flow and more that I'm pushing into basically fitting my expectations harder it gets more, you know, more, more struggles we have, because that's the problem. We have those expectations of what we're going to do. How am I going to do it? When I'm going to do it. And those expectations always say, let them go. Because, you know, like I said, I was supposed to meet with you at that time, but then my baby, I'm like, what can I do now? Like I can stress, I can tell you, I'm sorry. Yes, of course I will, but that's about it. And then go with the flow. Like, well, again, what's the solution? Not all oh, the issues, the issues, baby, you know, oh, baby completely messed up my day, my, my schedule, whatever, you know, I can be focused on this right now, but I'm focused. Okay. How can we do it better? Where, where can I, you know, find a way to go around it? So yeah, those expectations always horrible thing for us <laughs> and just kind of read the room and go with it, especially when you have kids. And of course, even husband to see, you know, like there are going to be time when my husband's going to come and it's like, oh, you've been working so so much lately, you know, I haven't seen you for a while. Maybe tonight we can just chill and then we'll talk. And, and then, you know, if he sees that I need, need to work because I have some due, whatever, he'll be like, okay, I get it. Work today. We'll, I don't know, make a reservation for Saturday, whatever. But if I see that, you know, I can pause because I do know that my husband needs me and, you know, to make sure that I'm reconnecting with him constantly, then I'll be like, you know what, let the work be. And again, everything happens for a reason. So everything the way it is, it's supposed to be. Absolutely. I definitely agree. And I think that I love that you mentioned mom guilt because so as we mentioned, um, if the, hopefully viewers, if you get anything from this uh, conversation, it's definitely that you need to stop like beating yourself up because it's not bad to choose you. And even when you have all those responsibilities, I feel that we definitely live in a society where there's a lot of pressure, you know, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of expectations, as you mentioned, but we're really good, especially in America, about punishing people. So if you do not rise to the occasion, and so if you do not run yourself ragged, and it's like, I just love when there's people like you with such a refreshing perspective of no let's not do that because you're not ultimately you're really not going to be able to perform well so honestly so even if you do do that even if you do exactly. try to run you know what I mean at a million pace eventually that's why it does catch up to you but I also love 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 that you mentioned too this is why it's important to know yourself because even for you to be able to communicate those needs you have to know who you are and what you need to then say them you know and I think too I've definitely heard a lot of people who are in relationships sometimes we want the other person to like read our mind but it's like that's <laughs> possible <laughs> we're, we're yeah not that's my favorite it. exactly we don't say it out loud but then we he should know by now I love <laughs> that one yes 
And so that's why I love that you said, nope, opposite. I'm sorry. As someone who's in a relationship, I can tell you, you have to communicate those needs. I mean, you have to have a partner who's pretty intuitive. I mean, he, he picks up on things and it seems like, you know what I mean? You guys got that. Yeah. But even then, I'm sure it took work. It wasn't like, you know. <laughs> exactly. And the funny thing is, that's why I was saying, like, when I, when we met, I was all this, you know, crazy girl energy, you know, look at your emotions. Are you positive? Are you negative? You're going to manifest yourself something. He's like, oh my God, you know, like, I'm pretty sure I was annoying at a point, but I never forced anything on him. So when we started dating, he was like, oh, let me, I've always tried. I always wanted to try to meditate. Let's meditate. And I'm like, oh my God, I love you. You know, <laughs> that's how my reaction was. <laughs> so we did meditate for a while, but then I knew that this was not like his thing. So we went out of that. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not going to break up with you right now because you just stopped meditating with me. Right. But fine, I get it. And then, um, especially with this, and this is why I work with women now, since we're almost going into that topic is, you know, how can I do something if it's just me or my husband doesn't want to cooperate or doesn't want to get help and all that? Cause I, that's all I get all the time. And that's, I I've done this. I know how it is, but you need to be that example. You're not going to make him do it. You're not going to tell him to do it because then you're just basically pushing further away, but you do it and then you do it more and then you do it more and then do do it more. And then my husband started asking like, what do you do? And then it was uh, a few years ago that, you know, I turned like a big amount of money. Like I went into business and I turned a big amount of money and he's like, okay, so apparently I need that coach. So he just started asking my coach stuff and then he joined the sessions and then he started learning. And then, you know, now we, we don't have those like uh, um, quote unquote group sessions no more. Every time if we, I do need, I'm going to call, you know, my coach and I'll be like, okay, help me out from this perspective. But the thought, the thing is that he see, he saw me use it and how to use it and what to do with it. And then he started doing the same. And now you know, now we basically do it to each other. So his practice, he's grown, I've grown. So when, okay, I'm going to tell you this, this is going to be a funny story. So a few months ago, he was working in real estate with another lady who was crazy for my husband. So she fell in love with my husband. Yes. And, 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 you know, okay, Dominicans, all of them are quite sexual and flirty and all that. So that's normal. Right. But she went overboard asking him, like she was telling him like, you know, let's go and do it. Like in the car, like offering like straight up, like I'm not even, you know, not no mild, but straight up. So the funny thing is he did not tell me the first moment when it happened. He was like, you know what? Let me handle this. So he told me later, but he was like, you know, let me handle this. Right. So he went and handled it in his own way. That was not as effective as he thought it would have been. Right. So she did it like three, four times, very straightforward because apparently she didn't take no as a no. Right. And then he told me and then we sat down. And of course, in that moment, when he started telling me, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do something. Right. That's basically the normal reaction. Right. But then I had to put my coaching hat on. I was like, OK, what would you say if this was your client, you know, telling you stuff like from a real energy perspective that it's not your husband. Right. So, OK, how what did you do? How did you talk to her? What did you tell her? And I'm like, OK, you know, firstly, you know, this is job. So if it's job, then make sure it's only job. As soon as the line is crossed, done. Like line is crossed. I'm telling you right now, you're crossing the line, right? Boundaries. So we had a whole boundary discussion happening. But the point is, he came to me. He told me he knew he messed up something in between because apparently it was not working the way he pictured it to be because on that field, he didn't have that much knowledge. So he knows I'm a relationship coach. He knows I deal with my clients. So he comes and tells me about it. And I'm like, okay, you got to do like this, like this, like this. And I told him, and everything was fine and everything got solved. And he knew from that lesson that, you know, firstly, tell me as soon as you something happens, <laughs> don't be like, I'll do it by myself, crap, right? <laughs> Uh, and then another uh, is just another topic that he learned how to handle some stuff because he does with clients as well. And when you have clients, you need to have boundaries, right? So, and now, of course, you know, sometimes he coaches me, sometimes I coach him. Sometimes when I'm lacking some, I guess my, you know, like making sure that I'm the highest version of myself, he'll be like, hey, Anya, uh, you've been slacking over there and over there and this is what you're doing. I'm like, eh, okay, you're right. Okay. Okay. You're right. 
let me get better. So it's like, but, but it, it takes a while to get there because basically right now we're pinpointing our faults and this is not fun to do in a relationship. This is not, don't do that. If you are, do not do that, if your relationship is not already on high, high level. So what I'm saying is when he pinpoints my faults, I'll be like, okay, how can I think about it? But again, it needs to be on a certain level for you to actually take that because our egos, you know, are our egos. <laughs> Absolutely. And they definitely get in the way. Yeah, <laughs> right. I always. Right. Absolutely. But that is a perfect transition. I would definitely say that you mentioned a lot of things that, you know, deal with the coaching and how you put your coaching head on and how we do that. Um, and, you know, and the different techniques that you're able to then, you know, employ and use and how mm-hmm. that really helps people, you know, to get better, including yourself. You know what I mean? And I love that you do have not only a great partner, it sounds like, but somebody who keeps you accountable. You know what I mean? With yeah. Your- Yes, he he's there with you, supports you, but calls you out on your crappy feet. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. great to have all of that, right? Mm-hmm. But yes, as a coach, so yeah, absolutely. What all do you do? What does that look like? What kind of things do you provide for others? Um, so yeah, I work with females only, and this is the whole point, right? Like, how can I? Because you got to be the example. You have to be your highest version. And then I always I always do this example because I always say when you start. Um, investing in yourself, in your knowledge, in your wisdom, in self-growth, in self-improvements, when you really start working with yourself. So there's this, you find so much stuff that needs to be worked on that you don't have time to talk, deal with your neighbors and what your friends are going through and what, you know, the, the, your uh, coworkers told you and this gossip and that gossip, like you don't have time for that because you, I mean, again, it depends on what kind of levels you want to live in your life. I believe that there's no level up there. So I knew when I met my husband and he asked me like, what's the number one value that you need us to have in order for us to function? I'm like continuous growth. That's it. Growth. That was it. And he knew that as soon as he's going to start sleeping or being in his comfort zone, I'll be like, Hey, you know, this, this is not where we're dealing. Cause you know, if you don't step up, like I'm not down, like he knows basically that I'm not going to be with him. And if he stops growing, he knows that for a fact. So we make sure that we're accountable on that part. Right. But um, yeah, so they always ask me how to do it and why I do it um, work with women is because I believe that women, we have this goddess energy and from energy perspective, from 2020 on, this was a strong energy shift that happened in the world. So from complete energy scientific, uh, yes, perspective, that uh, energies has changed. And finally, women are waking up into knowing what their power is, because we've always been powerful, but we have been misusing that power, usually through sexual manipulation or just manipulation whatsoever. Now we need to learn how to use that energy in our benefit to, you know, level up our life and on all fields, all fields. So I am an energy relationship coach because I'm passionate about showing what a, you know, thriving relationship looks like, but ultimately I'm not only going to coach you how to be an amazing wife. You get a whole package, which is learning how to be a better, you know, a sister, a better daughter, a better mother, a better coworker, a better business uh, owner from completely energy perspective of understanding that everything that happens outside of you is only a reflection of your inner work of your inner self. So when you work with your inner self, then stuff around you starts changing, right? So that we go back to this now relationship, how can I influence my man, right? When you change your behavior, when you change your responses, even your words and your energy, then he cannot be in his, you know, usual stuff. Because when you're going to say something else than you usually do, then he's going to be like, okay, so I have to say something else back, right? So he automatically changes with you. So, and I also say from an energy perspective, again, because you are, you know, connected, you are, you know, in a relationship, you are energetically connected. What does that mean is how do men know when we are not a hundred percent and they'll be like, you know, like, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. And you'll be like, no, 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 I'm fine. All that BS that we sell him, but we know we're not fine. Right? So they know, they feel, people feel knowing consciously or not consciously, they feel it. So when you work with that energy of yourself, then he changes his energy, right? And then 
you, when you start working with yourself, I always say you have three options in your life. Let's say that you are in a relationship that you're not happy with. Okay. That you like, it's fine, but you want more. Let's put it like that. So you start improving yourself. You work and you work and you work and you uh, become this goddess. I call it, you become a goddess. Now, if you don't get everything, you know, before you didn't get all the things that you wanted from him. Now you're turning yourself into this ultimate goddess day through day. Then how, how wouldn't he give you everything that you want? Like if he doesn't, then he's, you know, dumb. I'm sorry. Then my question is like, what are you doing with him? Right. If you know that you're this freaking amazing goddess from day to day growing and improving yourself, like that you have the tools, do you have the knowledge and you're doing it? So you're amazing. So and if he does not doing it, then like, what are you doing with him? Number one question. Right. And then ultimately, yeah, they do change because men are built to serve us in a way. <laughs> that's, that sounded crazy, but, the, you know, to, to make us happy, they would do everything to make us happy and they do it but we don't know how to kind of open them up. So the opening up part of how is he going to follow you is the issue because majority of women are very hard and very indecisive. So what does that mean? Not really knowing what they want and being ha -ha, like this ha -ha, with like all this strong masculine leadership energy that might be good in business, but when it comes to relationship, it's a whole different story. Right. So learning how to use that energy with your man. So he follows and usually, yes, he follows. So that's the, you know, the best scenario. So basically what I do with my clients, I teach you how to do it. So you get this because I always say you can't change him, but you can influence him. So this is what we do now. That's the best scenario. This is basically what happened with my husband, because again, when we met, he had no idea about that. He was just kind of, okay, you crazy, but I'll listen to you. And then he listened and he listening. And now he's like, let's meditate together every morning. Let's, you know, let's manifest stuff together. Let's, what else are we needing? And he's like, oh my God. Right. So, so this is basically what's happening in my life now, uh, because I was the one that started first. Okay. But my ex relationship, right, is the other, the, the, the other extreme of the story. What happened is I started working with myself. I was eager. I learned. I became better and better. But he did not want to budge. He did not want to follow because he was too stubborn, because he was too much in his old ways, too much ego, too much pride. So when that happened, when that, when, when you are in a relationship with a person like this, then you have two options, right? Number one, which many people do happen. And this is what happens that, you know, women satisfy with this mediocrity. Let me just be in this survival mode, which means it's like, I want this one because I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to be single. I'm afraid I'm not going to get a better one. I'm going to afraid nobody's going to love me because I have kids or I've been divorced or whatever that, you know, your ego tells you. So you settle with that and you need to fit his pattern to be with him. Like, okay, he wants a woman like this, like this, like this. So you be that. But ultimately we women we have souls we feel that this is not going to make you happy this is going to make you miserable with yourself with your life with everything and sooner or later something's going to break for a fact it just it, it just you know like it's like it's a time bomb it's a time bomb or maybe you will you know live until you die miserable i mean that's an option as well right so this is the one uh possible version of the story and it happens a lot and then the second version, which is basically what happened to me is I grew, I learned. And one day I woke up and it was so freaking clear to me that this husband of mine is not supposed to be my husband. This is not it. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing in this world. But I had the clarity and I'm like, you know what? This is not it. I want to get a divorce. And I had the courage and the support again and everything to move on. So I could have done, you know, I've done the shift to be with the man that I am now. So those three versions, that's what I always say. And that's basically what I do with my clients. <laughs> nice. Beautiful, beautiful. And I agree. And then and then that's the thing too. So if we are speaking to anyone that's like resonating with any of this, if anything is any of this is speaking to you, please know that yes, as you can see, there is hope on the other side. You know what I mean? So if you're at the very beginning stage and you're thinking like, oh, I can't relate to any of that yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. Maybe you're in the middle, you know what I'm saying? You're starting to get your steps together. You're not there. Maybe you are there in a relationship and you're like, wow, maybe I could use some of this. Either one, there's hope for each and every one of you. And you're always able to evolve. You have permission. 
to evolve, you know, develop yeah. as a human being and, you know, get to those new heights. So I agree. I just love that, you know, you shed light on that and that there are people like yourself who can help with that. You know what I mean? So if you do need that support. Maybe you need yeah. some tips on it and maybe you don't want to do it alone. There are absolutely people that, you know, would love to help you with that. But like in your case, literally dedicate their lives to it. <laughs> so like, I think it's awesome that in your case, you have this very unique way of doing that, but ultimately it's just to help get a better version of you, you know, get in touch with that. And then, and, and, and also uniquely in this case, make you also be a better partner in your relationship so I think which is amazing so yes no I definitely sold myself speaking of being sold <laughs> so I love it but I definitely think that there's probably a lot of people who love what you said and might want to connect with you so I am very curious like if you could just give however and wherever they can find you and how to connect with you the best way I've been always working through Instagram so on Instagram you can get me as goddessenergy.coach that's where I am. Yes, I've been very clubhouse oriented. So you can get me there as well. And you can actually hear me be in those debates. But yeah, the easiest way will definitely be Instagram. Awesome. Very good. And good to know, because in that way, they can connect with you, you know, be able to send you DMs or well, yes, podcast. exactly. Well, that part. And I was going to say two viewers, Um, at one point you used some cool Spanish words and I wanted to like make sure they were said. So she said campo, which in case everybody doesn't know, that means it's countryside. You know what I'm saying? It's more out there, a little bit more rural. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. She also said her kids are sometimes ñoño, so that means that they want extra attention. So I thought that was super cute. I didn't even get a chance to translate. Um, your girl there's got no, shot. There's no that's awesome it. translation of those words in English. Like, exactly. You know, that, you that's it. it. <laughs> Right. So I loved it. And then all of that. So, yep. So we got y'all. If there's anything else, <laughs> drop it in the comments. We got y'all. We'll let you know if there's anything else you need. But y'all heard it here. Social media is the thing. Oh, and I also love, wanted to end with that too. And then if there's any last words you have, I love, love, love that 2020 was this energy, you know what I'm saying? Like shift and all that. I can definitely speak to it, y'all, because if you all recall, I mean, even seeing my face, this was a new opportunity for me in 2020. I don't think I would have ever been a co-host of a show if you would have told me this like a year ago. Um, also, there's been new opportunities, even meeting people like yourself. So I definitely think that, no, I agree with that completely. I definitely think that, yep, this is a good time and it's just a good time to take advantage of it. So yes. yes. Yep. So with that, is there any last words you have for our people? I have one last uh, um, th thing that, you know, they can think about. Um, and this is comes up so often. You know, I'm a coach, I'm a relationship coach, and many people are still trying to do it all by themselves. I'll put it like that. Okay. All by themselves. And they learn books and they read documentaries. And I'm going to support all those stuff. But what I always say, like we people are born to teach each other, to pass the knowledge. And look, I can say maybe you will achieve that level of, you know, success with your relationship or in your life that where you want to be with time. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't see the future, but coaches are here for you to save that time, to lower that time and to lower that energy and to lower that struggle in between, because that was a struggle that I had to go on over for so how many years, right? And now with that, I can help others. So you don't have to walk that same path and get to your results faster and better because we all need a coach when we learn how to, you know, drive a car or read or write. But when it comes to relationship, we just have this lame mainly examples and and that's not enough it's not enough so like asking for help or not just asking for help but being open to know that the only constant thing in life is change because life is about growing then get yourself surrounded with people that know what they're talking about so you can grow faster and as a soul walk on this planet you know with more experience and better life absolutely couldn't have said it better myself um, <laughs> yeah I definitely agree and so and what I also heard in that is that so again as we mentioned to you choosing yourself is not a bad thing please don't feel guilty about doing that always also, first yes absolutely and also asking for help is also not a bad thing there are people here to help you so if you need it you definitely don't need to feel guilty about it and just definitely take advantage because if there's resources and if there's a way um if there's a cheat code <laughs> basically because these are people that have tips exactly why not? if i could do that you know what i mean i'm, I'm calling on my cheat code <laughs> like, exactly let me, let me in on the secret definitely that part so with that thank you so much anya thank for you for letting me having me <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And thank you all everyone that tuned in today. Y'all heard it here. Goddessenergy.coach, right? On yeah. 
Instagram, find her there, connect, and definitely we hope to see you all soon. Thank y'all.